Hey everyone, there is a second reaction that I want to go over in this unit of conjugated pi systems, and that is the Diels Alder reaction. Uh, the Diels Alder reaction was uh, developed by uh, obviously two scientists, uh, Otto Diels and Kurt Alder, and they received the Nobel Prize in 1950. 1950 Nobel. The real reaction because you are forming uh, two new sigma bonds and one pi bond, and you're connecting, you're making, um, connecting two molecules together in two different places. Okay, so that's uh, a mouthful. Let me just show you. This is reaction 12b. Feels alder. The Diels Alder reaction, before we see our first example, uh, has been used in the past to make really interesting materials. Um, that they're used to make uh, materials called polymers, which are basically plastics. Um, one of the more famous products made by Diels Alder reaction is, um, is a material that absorbs oil. So when the, uh, I forgot, it was the, um, I forgot which uh, drill tower uh, exploded uh, a long time ago. Oh man, in the Gulf of Mexico. Well, there was an oil spill, and they used this material to suck up uh, excess uh, oil uh, from the ocean water, and it was it was used extensively uh, in the cleanup of the Gulf Col Col Gulf Gulf Coast. Okay. And if we have time, we'll take a look at that product. But a very simple deals all the reaction is, is basically a diene. And I am drawing the diene a little bit strange. Plus an alkene. And I'm going to put an, a group on here. Let me put a cyanide group on it. Okay, so it's a nitrile. And the product you get can be a little bit tricky at first to, to draw. So let me give you hints right away. The hint would be identify your diene and put two dots on the ends of that diene. The ends meaning the, the ends of the four sp2 carbons. So I could still have decoration here, but the two dots I'm interested in are the two dots at the end of these two double bonds. Okay. This molecule is called the diene, obviously. The molecule that reacts with the diene is the lover. It loves dienes. That's why we call this di the dienophile. dienophile. And it's typically just one carbon-carbon um, double bond. Okay. We'll see some variations in a bit, but really what you're thinking about is the diene reacting with the dienophile. Oops. Vice versa. Dienophile reacting with the diene. Two red dots. I'm going to use blue dots for my dienophile. Okay. We're going to keep an eye on those two blue dots and two red dots. The first arrow that I like to draw is the dienophile coming in from its pi bond and hitting one of the red dots. That carbon signified by the red dot is too crowded now. It has five bonds, and you are going to shift the double bond next door. Now this carbon has too many bonds, so you're going to break that pi bond and then connect to this dot right there. Those are the arrows. Can you draw me the product trusting my green mechanism arrows? Go ahead and pause the video and draw me what you think the product looks like, and then when you're done, unpause the video. Okay. We have this. Let me draw those four carbons of the diene, and let me go ahead and right away put the two red dots. I know there's no double bond up here because it got shifted to the left. And I know I don't have a double bond down here because it was used to make a connection. Ah, a connection to the blue. 
that blue dot is connected to the other blue dot and this arrow right here signifies that there's going to be a bond between that blue dot and that red dot you have that very interesting we make a six membered ring and we do have this cyano group or you could call it a cyanide or a nitrile group all those are perfectly fine hanging off on the side if you think about what was made what are the connections these are your two molecules right here so there will be a, a problem where you have to go backwards and tell me based on this molecule do you know what was the original diene and what was the original dienophile okay um, all right now let me mention a couple of things about uh, both the diene and the dienophile the diene because you have these pi bonds are considered electron rich electron rich and a dienophile is typically going to be the electron poor okay so i know i drew the first arrow up here but technically all three arrows all three movements of electrons happen at the same time they are called concerted it's a concerted uh, step I guess is what you can say they act in concert but if you think about the rich and the poor you would most likely attribute or categorize this as a nucleophile and you're attacking the electrophile nucleophile is electron rich correct so we can speed up these reactions right we can speed up these reactions by putting what um, making this really electron rich by putting electron donating groups so when you just want to speed up a deals alder when you want a fast deals alder your diene should have electron donating groups do you remember what the electron donating groups are uh, if you have for instance an alkyl group alkyl groups are electron donating so methyl ethyl whatever any hydrocarbon oxygen is a little bit weird and we'll make this a ether if we have a OR group on any of these carbons it's electron um, donating due to resonance due to resonance okay we all know that oxygen is electronegative, but we have competing factors here. It's electron withdrawing based on its electronegativity, but for these cases, the resonance plays a bigger role, and it's electron donating due to what? This resonance by pushing the electrons to make that pi bond. Imagine if there was an OR group here, right? We would put literally a negative charge on this carbon by pushing electrons this way. The opposite is true for the dienophile, right? The dienophile should have electron withdrawing groups. I have one already here, this cyano group. Why do I say that's electron withdrawing? It's electron withdrawing because this is partial positive, that carbon, and it's drawing electrons away from the the diene, from the di up oh, from the alkene, from the alkene. Okay. And some other electron withdrawing groups, carbonyl, because that carbon there is partial positive. So your electron withdrawing effect is what's called inductive. You have a dipole going this way. So I know that this is partial positive, and you don't normally think of you know, the dipole pointing to the electropositive. What I'm saying here is that because this is electropositive, it's pulling electrons, attracting electrons, away from the alkene. The other way you could think about it is ultimately this atom on the very very end is partial negative. So that's where the grand pull is. It's going towards the electronegative atom. Okay. okay. We need to do several examples because this is the simplest example. Because we only have a four carbon piece and here we have an alkene with a group. Okay. Uh, so um, Technically, the simplest example is that, right? 
Let's practice. The other thing is, I'll tell you why uh, you'll have to have this confirmation. It ha actually has a special name. Um, but why don't we do another, have a die in like this. Okay. And uh, let's just put groups on it. Let's put an electron donating group. This. The deals Alder reaction can get complicated very, very quickly due to um, different constitutional isomers that could be made. Okay. You know, you, it, it didn't matter that we drew the, the cyano group on the top. If we had flipped it and it was down on this carbon, we would still get the same product. For very simple examples, I'm going to try to keep it where you don't get mixtures of constitutional isomers. Because you could imagine, what if I had this? Um, let's make this the diunophile now. See, I could add these two with the two groups on the same side, or I could add them with them on different sides. So what am I going to do? I'm going to make this symmetrical. I'm going to make... Um, I'll make this one symmetrical. Okay. Do I need to make this one symmetrical? No. Because when I bring these two together, that carbonyl group is going to be closer to the OCH3. Or if I had flipped it, it's still close to the OCH3 because this is symmetrical. Okay. So there really should only be one product. We are not worried yet about uh, chiral carbons and about stereochemistry. Okay, because you know here, right, this is racemic because this is RNS. This is a chiral carbon and is it RNS? Yeah, you would you would form a mixture here. Okay. Let's not worry about stereoisomer mixtures. Let's just worry about getting the right product. The right connections. The other way you could speed up the reaction is with heat. So you notice that Maybe this is why, partly why, they won the Nobel Prize. There's no waste. There's no atom or leaving group. There's no catalyst. There's no thing that you're adding. All the atoms that you see here are literally here. We don't lose any atoms. So maybe that's one of the re reasons. I'm sure that is one of the reasons. It's called atom economical. Look back at all the reactions, starting back from um, hydrogenation or starting back from radical halogenation. In every single one of those reactions, you're using some other reagent or you're kicking out a leaving group or both. And those are atoms that never make it onto the product. So that's what it means to be atom economical. You use all or as many atoms as possible in the reaction. Okay. You could start this reaction though with heat. All right. Again, heat is not an atom, right? It's very cheap. You could heat anything up pretty easily. Can we please do our tricks? I think this will save us a lot of uh, um, silly errors. Two red dots, two blue dots. Okay. Two red dots, two blue dots, okay. and let us draw. I'm going to now draw it as if we had electron-rich attacking electron-poor. So I'm going to start um, here, and I'm going to have the attack like that. Okay, carbon number one, oh, arrow number one. Then this will force this double bond to jump over. And then that will force this pi bond to uh, shift, making sure that every carbon still stays neutral. Six membered ring, the double bond has shifted, right? And we have this group up here, and we have OCH3 over here. I'm going to draw it the other direction OCH3. I think that's it. Verify your two blue dots. Verify your two red dots. You can even verify that, yes, those are the two pieces. 
when you go backwards, okay, there will be problems where you have to go backwards and do a retro deals alder. Let's not worry about the mechanism arrows. Let's try to figure out what the starting materials are. So look at the molecule on the left, or the part on the left. Okay, here's a note card. So that part there, the two red dots, that was the diene, or was that the dienophile? If you recall, we're using the red dots to indicate the diene. So you have to convert this to make it look like that. That's your starting material. Okay, it's not it's not as simple as just copying what you see. You have to realize that it started out as a diene. What about the right half of the molecule? Right half of the molecule is right there, the two blue dots. Well, we know that in an ideals alder reaction, it's typically the dienophile is typically a carbon-carbon double bond. So we're going to make sure that that bond between the blue dots is a carbon-carbon double bond. Okay. okay. I'm not going to draw orbitals. Normally, to explain why this is a um, this confirmation, you would draw orbitals. Let me just tell you though that the names, at least, if you have it like this, okay, you know that there's actually no cis and trans, right? Because that's not a cis or trans alkene, and that's not a cis or trans alkene. This is called S trans. It's not that the groups on the each individual double bond are opposite each other. It's telling you that the two double bonds themselves are opposite each other. To do deals alder, you have to have the confirmation what's called S cis. Now the thing is, you know, take a look at these two confirmations. Which one do you think is more stable? The S trans or the S cis? Don't worry about what the S stands for. I could speculate, but I'm not 100% sure. What I like to think about is when you have the S cis, that's C, you look like the letter C. Okay, now does this look like the letter S? Not really. But this is S trans. The double bonds are, uh, what what can we say, on opposite sides of this line right here. Okay, and this is S cis. You know, when we do the cyclization, Right. Another way to call this is it's it's called a four plus two addition. Four carbons add to two. I know we have more than four carbons, but those other carbons don't participate in the reaction. So in this and then I think there's usually brackets. A four plus two addition. In this four plus two addition, you gotta get right those two red dots ready to make a ring. See if they're in the S trans conformation. There's no way that you can make a six-membered ring, or it'd be very difficult to make a six-membered ring without rotating this around to get closer, to get closer. S cis is the confirmation that you need to do a deals alder reaction. Okay. Um, so there's, I'm going to show you a couple of variations. Okay. Again, the deals alder reaction is very versatile. We're, we're actually drawing the same three green mechanism arrows for each reaction, but the types of dienes and the types of dienophiles you could use are, are vast. And you could put a lot of different functionalities uh, in those types of uh, molecules. How about this? Let me give us, a, again, a diene. I'm going to put some electron donating groups, an al uh, ethyl group maybe. Okay. Remember, this is electron donating due to, it's called hyperconjugation. Not due to resonance, definitely not. Not due to electronegativity or induction because we don't have any polar bonds. It's based on the fact that, that the sigma bonds of this carbon can donate some electron density through space to the atoms next door. Don't worry about that. Okay. You you basically know hyperconjugation from explaining why 
a carbocation with three methyl groups is more stable than with just one methyl group, right? The more substituted a carbocation is, the more stable. That is also due to hyperconjugation. Okay, I know I said a lot. Um, let's give us a dienophile. Look at this dienophile that I'm going to use. It's not a double bond anymore. It's a triple bond. And let me give us some electron withdrawing groups. Really strongly electron withdrawing. Okay, nitro groups. We haven't thus far talked a lot about electron withdrawing and electron donating groups. I introduced it here uh, briefly. We'll talk more about that in uh, a future unit. Okay, it's good. It's coming up. But nitro groups are electron withdrawing. Okay, um, I'm not going to explain why. What do we do with a triple bond, though? If we think about our dots, we're still going to use our red dots and our blue dots. We're still going to use a pi bond to make a connection. Hmm. We have pi bonds, so just do what we know can happen. Okay, we know that these are the two red dots, and we're going to assume these are the two blue dots. I'm going to take the electron-rich diene and attack the electron-poor dienophile. Well, normally, if this was a double bond, I would just take that pi bond and connect it to this red carbon. I can still do the same thing. I can still do the same thing. I'm using only two electrons, so I know there are two pi bonds here. I'm only using one of the pi bonds to make that connection, and again, this has to shift. And you draw that reaction product. Go ahead and pause the video, draw what you think I have made, and unpause the video. And here's one hint. The hint is yes, the hint is there are no chiral carbons, I think, in this product. Yeah. Follow my arrows and unpause the video when you have your product, and we'll compare. Okay. Automatically, I'll make the six membered ring. Automatically, I'll shift that double bond. So far, every single Dills Alder product has this. Did you notice that? Every single Dills Alder product has this ring. With the two red dots and the two blue dots. Take a look at your notes. The ring with the two red dots, two blue dots. First reaction, a ring with two red dots and two blue dots, and the double bond to the left. We just have to decorate it. The thing is, we have an ethyl group there, but look, we went from a triple bond down to a double bond. That's a double bond now. We lost the pi bond like we did in all the other deals alder examples, but now when we lose a pi bond, we just go down to the double. That's flat. So really, these nitro groups are neither wedge nor dash, and that's why I said, yep, there are no chiral carbons. Yeah. That that's just a consequence. You, I mean, you don't want to try to memorize that. Okay, just work out the problem and see if you. Um, have any chiral carbons. Okay. So that's one variation where we use a triple bond. Another variation, and this is going to be kind of wacky, is what if your diene had a ring? Can we deal with that? Mm. Let's see. Let's, the diene is already a little, a little screwy. Let us make a very simple uh, dienophile. That. Just trust your dots. Red, red. Ugh, my drawing's not great. Red, red. Blue, blue. I said that we always make this ring. There are two ways to draw the product. Okay, be kind of be careful. Maybe make it a little bit larger. 
there's that ring. There's the shifting of the double bond. Draw the, where the red dots are. Draw where the blue dots are. Okay. What are we going to do with this? The red dots, if you want, we could... Let me draw the mechanism as well. Okay. See, this CH2 group is connecting to the two red dots. I don't have a connection between the two red dots just yet. So I'm going to draw this. Okay. That's the ring system. And now we have to take care of the CNs. The CNs are like this. The textbook talks about whether you want the CNs uh, wedge or dash when you draw the molecule like this. I'm not going to discuss that in this video, and for my class, I probably won't ex expect stereochemistry. But this is not the, really the most popular way to draw this molecule. The most popular way is to draw it on its side, and this is where it takes some practice. This is the five membered ring that I used. Okay, it looks a little strange, but where are your two red dots? Right here and right here. I took that ring and I kind of skewed it so that point is pointing up. So I bent I bent it. Okay, it's it's still possible, right? You can make a model of this really easily. I already had shifted the double bond because I'm in preparation, I'm in preparing to make this molecule. What I'm really doing is I'm drawing this molecule on its side, and I'm looking at it from the side, and here are your two blue dots. Okay. The fact of the matter is, and I'm not going to explain why, but the major product, let me just double check this, yes, the major product is going to have the CNs going down. Okay. What I like to think about it is the CNs are under the bridge. And this is the bridge right here. So the bridge is going, you know, spanning these two red dots. We're going to say this: the groups are under the bridge. This is called the endo conformation, and it is the major. Okay, so I am actually telling you a little bit about stereochemistry. See, the hydrogens are here. They're going kind of uppish, like that. Okay, but do you see? I think this green dotted line will help. Do you see the two pieces? The dienophile and the diene. Well, I'm going to take that molecule and put it on its side. That green dot dotted line is right there. Okay, it's just viewing it. Literally, you could take your paper and kind of skew it this way. And I'm looking at this molecule right here. See, what would happen to that dot? That dot is now floating above the molecule. And I am showing some stereochemistry. The other example and I would not expect people to draw this, but I do want them to understand if you're not under the bridge and your CNs are up like this, then that is called exo, the exo isomer. Okay. Now you just got to be really careful and analyze because if I have this deals all the reaction here and my CNs are on cis and trans, or sorry, my CNs are trans now. We can't have both CNs be going down to make the endo product because this stereo chemistry is set. If the CNs start opposite each other, they have to be opposite each other. So let me show you that drawing and then I think that's where I'll, I'll end the deals alder discussion. You'll get fast at this eventually, and then you could draw your red dots and blue dots if you can, if you can, if again you want to see where the two pieces are coming from. Right? This is a five-membered ring. One, two, three, four, five, and we're connecting it to this, these two carbons. Well, the CN started out opposite each other, so you have to choose, and it doesn't matter which one going down under the bridge, one going up same side as the bridge. And if you want to draw your hydrogens, you don't have to. If it's very clear to the grader whether those groups are up or down, you're golden. 
But if you want to just emphasize, yeah, that CN is down because this hydrogen's up. This again is the, oops, I was going to say the endo product, but it really isn't because the two groups are opposite each other. So here, for this example here, you are getting two products and you should pick a major one, which is when both CNs are under the bridge. Okay. The reason why it's under the bridge is uh, these groups are actually interacting with this diene right before the reaction takes place. So it's kind of tucked underneath. It's better with a picture, but I don't want to you know, clutter up uh, your understanding of this with more pictures. Over here, they are opposite. So the alkene had to have been trans. What are you expected to know how to do now? Now that you know the forward direction, imagine if I covered up everything and I said, what are the diene and the dienophile to make this molecule? That's a retrosynthetic analysis. And the way you want to do that is try to find your red dots and blue dots and understand that when you cut it, the left side was the diene, the right side was the dienophile and you got to draw those properly. Yeah. So there will be a couple of problems on the practice that uh, do something like this, where you have to do a retro analysis. I won't ask you to draw the mechanism to go backwards, because it is reversible. Um, but I may ask you, what are the two starter materials? What is the diene and what is the dienophile? And for my class, that is it for Unit 12, only three videos, um, and keep your eye out for those practice problems.